Hello everyone. Hi, Hello sir. Hi, sir. Let's get on with today's question. So they have told that there's a kingfisher bird and a fish underneath the water. So they are approaching towards each other and they have asked what is the relative velocity or what is the velocity of the bird as seen by the fish. So let's draw that figure. So here I'll draw a water surface. This is a water surface. And let's draw a bird, kingfisher bird. Before we start, I would like to tell a short story on how I learned to draw a bird like this. So what I used to do is when I was a kid, I used to draw landscape picture like this. There used to be mountains and a small hut here. And there's a door to the hut. And obviously don't miss out the trees because the people around should uh, be able to breathe. And the sun used to come out, something like this. And that's when I thought, in this picture, there's something missing. Why not draw birds? It looks more awesome. That's when I thought of drawing birds. So I started off with crow, something like this. So that's how I became professional in drawing birds. So let, now let's get back to the question. But so here it's a kingfisher bird. Yeah, but I only know to draw a crow, not a kingfisher bird. So I think this time we'll go with the crow. Next time we'll draw a kingfisher bird. Now they've said that this bird has a velocity of two meter per second. And there's a fish underwater, so like this, and it is approaching towards the surface and it is going up at a rate of 5 meter per second. And they have asked what is the velocity of the bird as seen by the fish. So I'll represent it as velocity of the bird as seen by the fish. That is, we need to figure out the relative velocity. To understand this better, let us try to imagine a situation where there is no water medium between them. But sir, if there is no water, then the fish will die, right? Yeah, that's why I told to imagine, not to take it to real because uh, you don't want to kill the fish. So let's imagine that the crow is here and the fish is at this level and they are both approaching towards each other. The crow is approaching at 2 meter per second and the uh, fish is approaching at 5 meter per second. Now, if the fish was stationary, if the fish was stationary and if it is looking at the bird like this, so as the bird comes down at 2 meter per second, the fish will see the bird coming down at 2 meter per second. But in this case, since the fish is also moving towards the bird, so it will feel that the bird is coming towards it a lot faster. This is coming down at 2 meter per second and this is also going towards it at 5 meter per second. So it will feel that the total, that is it will be covering a distance of 7 meter per second. That is why the fish will see that the relative velocity between them is not 2 meter per second. It will see a 2 plus 5 that is 7 meter per second. That is every second the distance between them will be closing in at a distance of 7 meter. Now here if I call this distance as some x that is the distance of the fish from the surface of the water as x and the distance of the bird from the surface of the water as h then this total distance between them becomes x plus h. So here this distance is x plus h. So I can tell this 7 meter per second is the rate of change of this distance that is x plus h. How fast this distance between them is closing in that is this 7 meter per second that will be the velocity of the bird as seen by the fish. But in reality we know that there is going to be a medium between the fish and the fish and the bird. So, and also we know the refractive index of the air is 1 and refractive index of water is 4 by 3. That means the water is optically denser than the air. That is why, say suppose I am taking a light ray from the bird entering into the water medium. So, here if I draw a normal, since the water is optically more denser, the velocity of the light ray is going to decrease. That is why when it enters into water medium, it will take a shorter path. Hence, the light ray will bend. In this case, it will bend towards the normal like this. Then the fish will be perceiving this light ray instead of this light ray. So if the fish was perceiving the actual light ray, then when it retraces its path, it will see the bird coming at this point. But since the light ray is bent and the fish is not aware of that, that is the fish is not aware that refraction is taking place. So it perceives this bent ray and when it, its brain retraces the path and when it retraces its path, the fish is going to see the bird at a higher position than its actual position. So let's call this position as bird dash. So the fish is going to see the bird not at a height of h 
but instead of that it will see it at a height of h dash because of the bending of the light then in this case the velocity of the bird as seen by the fish should be the rate of change of the distance between them which is now this is x plus h dash so the total distance becomes h plus h dash so this should be the velocity now before solving this we need to know a relation between h dash that is the apparent height and the actual height of the bird so let's just see that and come back to this video here let us do a small derivation that is as you can see the light ray from the bird is going like this and here uh, this is this is the normal and the incident ray and the normal is making an angle uh, that is angle of incidence so if this is angle of incidence i then this is also i and in the same way here after uh, getting into the second medium it is going to bend towards the normal so this is angle of refraction that is angle between the refracted ray and the normal so if this is r this angle is going to be r so here if this angle is r we know this also is going to be r alternate angles so now if we take say suppose if we take this triangle okay so in that let's take this distance to be some d so in that triangle i can write tan i tan i as opposite by the height which is h and if you take this triangle so in that triangle you can write tan r so tan r is opposite is same d divided by now the uh, adjacent side is h dash so if you divide these two uh, this uh, dd cancels so i'll get tan i by tan r as h dash by h now also we know from snell's law that is you can write snell's law by the refractive index times the the refractive index of the medium where incidence is happening times the sine of angle of incidence is equal to refractive index of the refracting medium times the sine of angle of refraction and from this if i write this as sin i by sin r you will be getting mu2 by mu1 now here if we do an approximation that if this angle i and r is very small that is the angle of incidence and angle of refraction is very small then this sin i will be approximately equal to tan i in the same way sin r will be approximately equal to tan r so we can approximate we can do this approximation only for very small angles of i and r so from that we know this term sin i by sin r will become now tan i by tan r and which is this one so i can substitute here h dash by h now we have got a relation between the apparent height and the actual height to the refractive indices of the medium so this is the relation and also if you don't want to do all these stuff and uh, if you want to know this or if you want to get this uh, relation directly without any confusion it's simple so as you can see if i divide the ratio h dash by h so h is going to be longer in this case compared to h which means this term is greater than 1 that means if i write the ratio i have to write mu2 by mu1 because as you know the refractive index of the water is greater than the air so mu2 by mu1 will be greater than 1 so h dash by h should be equal to mu2 by mu1 so you can remember this directly also so now that we know about this relation that is h dash by h is mu2 by mu1 then i can substitute that here so here the first term is dx by dt so x is this distance between the fish and the water surface so dx by dt is how fast it is changing and in question they have given that it is 5 meter per second so i can directly substitute the value 5 plus then the term is d by dt of h dash and h dash from this you know it is mu2 by mu1 times h and mu2 by mu1 is 4 by 3 by 1 that is going to be 4 by 3 times dh by dt and again h is the actual distance of the bird from the surface of the water so how fast that is changing with respect to time that is also given in the question that is 2 meter per second so if i substitute the value and if i simplify this i'll be getting a value of 7.67 meter per second so if you compare the two values here it is 7 meter per second without any medium but if there is a water medium between them then the velocity increases to 7.67 meter per second so let's try to conclude this so if the position of the bird was here and if the fish is uh, viewing 
the actual position of the bird then it will see the bird coming towards it at a rate of 7 meter per second that is this is the distance x plus h between them and this distance is closing in at a rate of 7 meter per second but because of refraction happening at the interface of water the fish is going to see a bir the bird at a higher height so now the distance has increased to x plus h dash which means the fish will perceive the bird coming at a faster rate so that is why now the velocity the relative velocity became 7.67 or the velocity with which the virtual bird is coming down is going to be 2.67 meter per second. So this 2.67 plus 5 will give you 7.67 meter per second. Also if you want you can understand it in this way also that is for the first case time is going to be the distance is x plus h the actual distance divided by vbf okay. But in second case what happened was the distance increased to x plus h dash and therefore the velocity has to increase to vbf dash. So that is the increase of 7 to 7.67 the time being the same in both the cases. But how is the time taken by the two different cases same? Aren't those two different points? Okay that question kind of bothered me. So. I think we'll do an experiment and verify what is happening. So let us do this experiment. I'm going to increase the brightness a little. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is take this marble and drop it at a certain height. So let's take a height of 14, sorry, 40 centimeter. So I'm holding the marble at a height of 40 centimeter. I'm sorry about the wiggliness in the tape. I, I guess it uh, won't matter in this experiment which we are doing. So I'm going to drop this marble from a height of 40 centimeter and I'm going to record the time just when it hits the surface of the water. So three, two, one. Okay. So I've recorded the time in the stopwatch. I've got it as 0.4 seconds. So approximately 0.4 seconds. Next, what we are going to do is I've uh, taken out my eyeball. Before doing this, I must warn you, this uh, can be a little graphic for uh, some of you. So I put up a warning. So it's uh, at, a, at your own risk. You're watching this and uh, please do not try this at home. It can be very dangerous. So I've taken my eyeball. So here and I'm going to put it inside the water. So I'll put it carefully. Yes. Now I'm going to repeat the same experiment, but uh, this time I'm going to watch it through my eyeball. So I'm going to again uh, take the marble and keep it at a height of 40 centimeters same tape i'm going to use so it doesn't make a difference now i'm going to drop it but when i drop it i'm going to and i look through my eyeballs and record the time when it just hits the surface so here we go three two one and we got the same time now it's like 0.4 yeah approximately 0.4 seconds so in both experiments we have got the same time so i just underwent a surgery fixing my eyeball so please don't try this experiment at home uh, so what happened was in that bucket of water when i dropped the marble from some height okay so that is uh, 40 centimeter so initially i recorded the time i found out to be around 4.4 seconds approximately and in second case what i did was so in the first case, I, I was viewing the, the time taken by the marble to hit the water surface. So that was 0.4 seconds. And in the second case, I removed the eyeball and kept it inside so that I, you know, I can uh, get an inner view. That is, I can see from the perspective of the fish. So when my eyeball is inside the water, when I hold the marble at 40 centimeters, I'll be seeing the marble not at 40 centimeters. I'll be seeing the marble at some uh, higher height than this 40 centimeter that is a virtual height and then i dropped the marble and recorded the time and even that time was also found to be 0.4 second from this what we can conclude is here as you can see the speed with the speed with which the actual bird is coming down is 2 meter per second but it's apparent uh, apparent or virtual bird coming down is 2.67 meter per second which means as they fall this is this virtual bird is going to catch up with the actual bird and when they fall and just when they are about to hit the surface they both should merge into a single point so that is why the time taken by both of them in these two cases has to be same so just to cross check with the theory so if we consider two cases case one and case two here uh, the bird is at this position 
and uh, fish is at this position here they have come little closer so in this case if i take a light ray like this okay hitting on the interface we know that uh, if we draw a normal it will bend towards the normal so if i draw a light ray bending towards the normal like this okay and if i retrace this path so we are going to get the position of the bird at this point so the separation between them now is this much okay now here in the second case we know as uh, time goes by this uh, bird is going to approach towards the surface of the water even fish is also going to approach towards the surface of the water so assume that bird is at this point now so in this case if i draw a ray like this and i'm going to draw the ray at the same point say i'm going to take the same distance here so this exact distance i'm going to take here okay so here so here if i draw a ray like this and if i draw the normal this is normal and the ray will bend towards the normal but at this time it will bend a little bit more because here as you can see here this is the angle of incidence here this is the angle of incidence and in this case since it is it has come down this angle of incidence is increased as you can see from both the figure so that means even the angle of refraction also has to increase because we know mu1 times sin i according to snell's law is mu2 times sin r so if uh, mu1 and mu2 are constants won't change so if i increases r also has to increase proportionately that means in this case the line should be here the bending is more here here as you can see the angle of refraction is small here the bending should be little less than this so the angle of refraction should be little larger which means if i retrace this back to a point here as you can see i've landed at some point here and now if you compare the this is bird dash and if you compare the distance with this and this you can see some changes right so this distance is less here so as it comes down and down the distance between them that is the apparent position and the actual position of the bird the distance of separation between them has to reduce and once it is about to hit the surface it should be zero in this one more thing you have to be careful is you can't take any of the rays because Say suppose in this case I have drawn a ray like this. If I take a ray like this, I may not be able to take this ray because this is this. If you draw a normal, as you can see, it is going to make a very large angle with the normal. That that is the angle of incidence in this case is large. In that case, as I've said, we won't be able to use this formula. That is h dash by h is equal to mu two by mu one. This formula was based on a approximation that the theta angle is very small then only we can approximate sin theta as tan theta so this derivation was based on that so if the angles are very large then we won't be able to use this formula so just be careful on that so that's my take on this question i'm not telling this uh, very conclusively because i've looked up on the internet i couldn't come up with a proper uh, justification but uh, yeah uh, with the theory and the experiment i think that's it so if you have your arguments i'm open to it please put down in the comments and uh, we'll figure this out is there any more doubt i had a doubt in the figure the way you have drawn the crow isn't that the way you draw grass oh you mean grass no grass is drawn like this okay like a small letter r but crow is drawn like this so there's a difference they are not the same so that's it for uh, this video i hope you enjoyed it yeah i had to go through little pain but i'm sure most of you would uh, like this video and uh, if you're new just subscribe and uh, let me know in the comment if you liked it or not and also share it with your friends so those things uh, you know those things would motivate me to do more uh, such stuff and uh, go through more pain so i'll see you all with another video thanks for watching